Hello, I am Crystal, and I'm on the praise and worship team here at Word of His Power Church. I would like to take this opportunity to remind you that we have a YouTube channel where you can find more messages that will feed your faith and bless your soul. We are Word of His Power Church, where lives are changed and people are blessed. Cry. 
wasn't easy, but he went to the cross for us. He tore the bars, he broke the bars, he defeated death. And now the grave has no victory. So we can sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good evening, everybody. Greetings to you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. Glad that we have opportunity to celebrate Good Friday. And even though Jesus died on Good Friday. Why it is called Good Friday? Because first, from God's perspective, it was good for him that he was able to implement his plan for mankind. Even before he started creating anything in this universe, we have been studying about that in the book of Ephesians, first chapter, the first 17 verses tells us God planned for this Good Friday even before the foundation of this, anything he ever created. So from his point, it was very good because he didn't have to wait anymore. He implemented successfully the plan which was originally visualized and decided by God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So from God's perspective, it was very good for him. So it is a good Friday. From our perspective, it is very good because on this day, the events resulted in you and I getting saved, be able to get rid of our sinful nature and receive God's grace and faith without doing anything and access God's every good thing he has for you and me by our faith through his grace. So it is good from that perspective, no longer we have to be sinners, no longer we have to be sick, no longer we have to be poor, no longer we have to be defeated in life. So that is very good. So on this Good Friday, the good news started. And why, what is so important on this Good Friday? Because on this day, Isaiah 53 says, Surely he bore our grief, carried our sorrow, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our, pay, our peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. See, Jesus on Good Friday, they beat him up, they punished him, whipped him, they hit him everywhere on the back, 
and then they put a crown of thorns all very sharp pricking poking things were placed on his head and then over and above that they nailed him to the cross through a sham judgment a kind of thing created between pontius pilate and the pharisee all the high priests and all this thing involved blood coming out of his body a sinless man's body before he went to the cross he was sinless until god placed all our sins upon him so lot of blood was shed why because that is the price that is what god used to redeem you and me and make it possible for everyone whosoever will believe to partake of the grace of god and have a wonderful life of faith in this planet earth so jesus blood was shed tonight i want to you all to get ready if you are taking notes take good notes how what the bible says about this blood and see every good friday until last good friday we have been hearing and studying about what happened on the good friday this good friday led of the spirit of god we are going to study and believe what is the effect of good friday for you and me that we must know so i want you to turn to the book of 1 peter 1 peter the first chapter and as i read you follow in your bible verse 18 and 19 1 peter 18 and 19 for as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot here peter who had a very close walk with jesus is telling us that we have been redeemed not with corruptible things like redeeming means buying you back you and i were owned by satan our enemy so we, to buy back normally slaves when they were traded they had to pay some money to go freedom to have freedom so like that we were slaves in the hands of satan so buy him back buy you and me back from his hands his hands mean his power influence and authority and ownership to get that god had to use the precious blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot that means jesus was sinless lamb he was sacrificed his death on the cross was not just one more criminal being hanged like they did all the time in those times this is precious so what is the meaning of he is talking about your conversation received by tradition from your fathers means he is talking about your life before you and i got born again the important thing is that what god did on good friday he decided to buy you and me by the precious blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot that means a sinless son of god was made to be sin on our behalf not only by god making him sin who knew no sin he had to make him shed that blood why because see 
even today you take any religion every religion has got some form of sacrifice hindus i was one of them we still practice lot of different kinds of animal sacrifice still going on same way the islamic people they also sacrifice but jesus christ him they don't know the truth that is why you and i are saved to let the world to know the truth by our lifestyle by our faith that this sacrifice for mankind to receive salvation freedom from sin is already done by god so jesus christ was sacrificed and he had to shed that blood the blood is precious because see what is what is the meaning of precious to be precious means of extreme value you see you and i should not be like this present generation who if you look around i have seen young and old they all know the price of almost everything like we sing song about jesus god paying a price oh that i know what it cost the lord what it cost for my sin like that we sing so we know the price the price paid for our salvation was the life of jesus but that is not enough you see like the present generation if you know the price of everything and you don't know the value of anything you will be only spending money and you won't be even be able to experience on the things you spend both joy as well as the effect of it in your own life for example why is gold precious because god put a value on that god said in genesis 2 gold is precious so from that time entire mankind they value gold means precious they kill each other for gold see blood of jesus christ without the blood of jesus christ the entire good friday and everything is just story waste of time see it you may pay a high price or whatever price the value of anything is determined both by the seller and by the buyer that's why you remember in gospel jesus said when a man found a piece of pearl priceless of great value as from his perspective it was very valuable so he sold everything and bought it why because he put the value is determined apart from the seller and the buyer the value is also determined by the person acquiring the thing how much what importance they place on that thing god placed so much important for your salvation and my salvation as a result the price jesus paid through the blood of jesus christ is called precious because of the value placed in that the blood of jesus christ is precious because of the great value placed by god now god wants you to learn from the word and start placing the same value on the blood of jesus in order to get whatever is in that value to become real in your life what do you mean by that see for example circumstances tells us some whether something is precious or not you know i don't know you realize this or not you are hell is precious until you face severe sickness and disease 
at that time your health become precious to you same way poverty makes riches precious thirst makes water precious hunger makes food precious same way sin makes the blood of jesus precious without the blood of jesus christ the bible says in hebrews 9 chapter without the shedding of the blood there is no remission of sin so bible right now we read you and i are bought with the precious blood of jesus means you have to now start knowing the value what is that see a lot of people we sing songs on the blood of jesus we we talk about little some churches only not because this is blood people think oh this is all blood a very horror thing we don't want to talk about it the more importance you place in the value of the blood of jesus christ the greater will be your blessing and your freedom from sin by shedding the blood of jesus god has removed your sinful nature and he has given you his nature i have the nature of jesus christ god himself the son of god you have it but that has to be sensed in your heart not in the head so it is so precious not only you and me if you read in the book of acts the 20th chapter verse 28 paul writing to all the elders of the church at the time he says take heed to feed the church of god that is all of us which which he hath purchased with his own blood see paul is saying when you are teaching the people of god don't just be like a college professor or school teacher to teach them the things of god because they are bought they are very valuable to god because god paid a very high price the value of it through the blood you are being valued by god so he tells all the teachers prophet apostles prophet teacher i mean evangelist pastor teacher the fivefold ministry is telling when you teach the people treat them with value because they are bought they are purchased with the blood of jesus i want you to listen this from your heart i'm glad i am trained by dr kennedy hagin and i am not just sitting and talking to you i value you all because my lord values you and me so i want to practice this that is why and that is how every service i come to feed you knowing that how much valuable you are to god i know how much i am valuable to god but then i am placed as a pastor not just so that people will just call me pastor 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 it doesn't matter what you call me what matters is you should recognize who has called me that is the head of the church lord jesus christ himself so he says teach them for they are purchased with the precious blood of jesus so the first and foremost the value of the blood of jesus is the redeeming power you and i are purchased or redeemed from the hands of your enemy now you and i are owned by god and that is because of the power in the blood of jesus the redeeming power of the blood of jesus so there are seven attributes the valuable attributes of the blood of jesus this is the first one the second one is the cleansing power of the blood of jesus remember the blood of jesus is precious 
because of sin makes it precious. You and I are born again. Only in the spirit, in the mind and body, we are told you work it out, your salvation. So in the mind and body, we are struggling. Many times we feel emotionally attacked. We feel emotionally down, disappointed, depressed. Sometimes your reasoning fights with you. Or you want to argue with everybody. If nobody, you want to argue with yourself. So that causes stress, agitation, no peace, restlessness. That starts showing up in your body. That is because you don't know how to navigate and handle sin which easily beset you and me. Bible says, in Hebrews it says, 12th chapter, sin that easily beset us. Because you don't have to even make effort. So automatically the sin tries to enter. Once it enters, that's got several ways the Bible tells how it enters. Once it enters, then you have to navigate, get rid of it. Otherwise, you are unclean. You read the Bible, you talk to pray, but inside you are not having that joy because you don't know how to. It is like a dirt. In the body, there is a dirt. You go and wash it with soap. If you don't wash, others will show, hey, there is something here in the face. Tell me, if there is sin in you, others will point out, hey, this is something not okay with you. But if you develop the faith in the blood of Jesus, Romans 3 says that, you can be cleansed. It doesn't matter. How do you get cleansed? I'm glad you asked me. In Epistle of John 1.7, it says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I want to read that in the Amplified Version. It says, but if we really are living and walking in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us, removes us from all sin and guilt, keeps us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestation. That means being a born again believer is not good enough for you to just attend church service, sing some songs, and just follow some routine for the notion of thinking that you have been a good Christian. No, 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 no. For your protection, my protection, he says, fellowship with one another. There are two, ty two types of fellowship involved here. First, you fellowship with him, he says. That is, you fellowship with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You fellowship with them. That's why in 2 Corinthians, Paul, in the benediction, he says that you may have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So through the Holy Spirit, you can fellowship with Jesus and God with the help of the word of God or other way around, you can have fellowship with God the Father and the Son through the word of God with the help of the Holy Spirit. Whichever way you want, you pray. That fellowship means it is not just a little hurried prayer. You take time Fellowshipping with one, one another is little praise him. He has given you how to fellowship with him. He doesn't want you to come and tell him some political jokes. He wants you to praise him. He wants you to worship him. 
that is how he enjoys your fellowship and my fellowship so apart from singing your favorite song you must literally take set aside some time to worship god worship god in the name of jesus sing songs which will lift him up and there are plenty of songs available but you should sing it sincerely thereby when you develop that worship attitude the spirit of worship then the glory of the lord will fill the church the sanctuary it is not just the responsibility of few people on the platform everyone has to do their part of worshiping so that when our true worship leaders who are saying we are taking extra responsibility to lead the people into worship that means they must be worshiping more than the other fellow then you can create a fellowship then without prayer without confession the blood of jesus christ washes us free from sin when we are free from sin then you can freely do things which god has called you and me to do because remember god hates sin sin and god those doesn't go together sin and satan they are synonymous sin satan and death they are synonymous god life and spirit word they are synonymous so he says fellowship with one another that is one with god and then fellowship with one another just because somebody don't agree with your opinion don't say yeah yeah but they are not our our group we cannot follow we don't go over that we our our group is special we believe in just distributing food okay if you believe in distributing food, still we can fellowship how are you brother we am praying for you don't break fellowship because of several divisions because you don't agree with that fellow opinion and nowadays this is a modern thing you know oh we are all highly we are all strongly opinionated have you ever sat and thought about every day before the sun rises god asks what is your opinion no is not interested in your opinion he is interested in your faith in doing things so as a result what is happening believe it or not other religion example islam has got only two division shia and sunni hinduism has got only four division christianity has got 835 the last time i learned in the bible school 835 denomination why because the, the more you are divided from fellowshipping with one another the more sin will prevail on you and the blood of jesus christ cannot wash you because that washing of the blood by the blood of your sin fellowship is the most important so first the blood of jesus has redeeming power you have to appropriate that power in your daily life then you have to appropriate the cleansing power of the blood of jesus christ you say pastor what are you talking about all this blood you see you have to understand the importance in the olden time in the old testament you see they sacrifice animals and the jewish people were told not only you have to sacrifice animal to cover your sins on several festivals but yearly once you must come to the temple and sacrifice the animal the as hindus we still follow many of those hindus may look vegetarian but when it comes to sacrifice behind the temple they do all these things and don't ask me more details but that's not important so sacrifice that blood which was shed it just covered their sins their nature remained with them it is like supposing i have this this is my bible black if black ink is dropped on this it will blend with the cover which is black and over and above that 
to protect that, I can cover it with my hand. For you, you cannot see the ink spot. But I know under this hand, the ink spot is there. That was the effect of the blood sacrifice of animals. Their sin remained. So what is the remedy? I'm glad you asked me. Go with me quickly to the book of Hebrews. We'll read a few verses. Instead of me talking, let the Holy Ghost talk to every one of us because tonight, many, many of you are going to receive that kind of freedom in your soul and in your body because the value, the blood, the precious blood of Jesus Christ has power, power to set you free from all the bondages which the devil has been trying to put on every one of us that will be broken tonight in the name of Jesus Christ in the power of the blood of Jesus, I'm telling you. So Hebrews, let us go to Hebrews first, the eighth chapter. While I read, follow this, hear it with your heart. Mark it if you are taking notes. Hebrews eighth chapter, I'm going to read verse number six onwards. Hebrews eight, six. This is talking about sacrifice instead of blood and blood of animals, sacrifice of Jesus, the Son of God. So it says here, Hebrews 8, verse 6, But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry, who Jesus Christ, by how much also is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For it was that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. What is he talking about? To understand it more, back up to the seventh chapter, we'll read from 25th verse onwards. Remember, chapters and numbers were put by man. So the seventh chapter flows into the eighth chapter. Eighth chapter was six to nine, what we read. You hold the thought there, back up to seventh chapter. I'm reading from verse 25 onwards. Follow this. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come to, unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the peoples, for this he did it once, when he offered up himself. Because he offered of himself, he has obtained a excellent ministry. What is the excellent ministry? Now he has become the high priest and apostle on our behalf. You, because of what Jesus did by shedding his own precious blood, you and I have access to God 24 hours, 7 days, until as long as you are alive, you can directly go to God. That's wonderful. Then quickly, go with me to the ninth chapter. As I read from verse number 11, watch this. Hear this. But Christ being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, 
having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an eifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. See, this cleansing, purging, means completely purifying you, spirit, soul, and body. This verse, 14th verse, you all need to highlight and constantly confess the blood of Jesus Christ purges my conscience from all dead works to serve the living God. And I fellowship with God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit by reading the word and praying in the spirit. So the blood of Jesus Christ continually washes me clean from all my sin. And because I fellowship with God, I love my brothers, which can be your own family members. I fellowship with them. Then what happens? The blood of Jesus Christ continually washes you from sins, which constantly, which is happening, you don't even know, but God cleanses it. But then again, if you see in Epistle of John, first chapter, the ninth verse says, if you confess your sins, then you can ask, how come blood of Jesus Christ in the seventh verse continuously washes me? Then why should I confess my sin again? See, those sins are, verse number nine is the sins you knowingly do. You knowingly refuse to love one another because you don't like their opinion. You don't like, see, modern time they call new, new names. Oh, cancel culture, this guy. Listen, stay with the Bible. You knowingly don't love one another, walk in love, fellowship. That is sin. If you do that, you have to go to God and confess, Lord, sorry, I walked out of love. I should have been walking in love. Forgive me, Lord. Then he will cleanse you. That is, that is an unrighteous act you did with your words and action. So 1 John 1 9 says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and cleanse you from all your unrighteousness. That is, you did a wrong act even though the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you, it is most of the time we commit those kind of sin when we stop fellowship with God, when we stop reading the Bible regularly, when we start worshiping God regularly, then you commit this kind of sin for which 1 John 1 9 is required. But in both ways, the precious blood of Jesus is ever ready, ever willing to wash you, cleanse you from your sin. That is why the blood of Jesus is precious. So learn to place importance. Don't walk around with unforgiveness. Don't walk around with sin in your life because that is not God's will for you. Then the third one, why the blood of Jesus Christ is precious? Because of its pacifying power. What do you mean pacifying power? See, when somebody is angry, you need to pacify them. Right? That's true. When we walk in sin, knowingly or unknowingly, it provokes God. He says, I, I, I recreate that spirit man. I shed the precious blood of my son and they are walking in darkness like this. Even though they are supposed to walk in the light, that provokes him. And you have to pacify him. Same way, when you walk in sin, it releases guilt in your life, guilt in my life. And even though we go to church, we read the Bible, we sing song, inside you are feeling guilty because you allow sin in your life. So the Colossians first chapter verse 20 says, and having made peace through the blood of his cross by his him." reconcile all things unto himself. So by the blood on the cross, the shed blood pacifies God against your sin 
and the blood on the cross pacifies your conscience against your guilt. So the blood of Jesus Christ has got pacifying power. Don't walk around in guilt all the time. Plead the blood of Jesus. Take the name of Jesus and say, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus. Then the feeling will go. Many of us are just walking every day by feeling. You are supposed to walk by faith. Guilt and feeling goes together. That is why it is called guilty feeling. For a faith man, there cannot be any guilty feeling because faith has overcome. If you don't place value in the blood of Jesus, then you cannot appropriate the power. Then the fourth one, what is the power the blood has got? The fourth power of the blood is reconciling power. Ephesians 2.13 says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who are sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. That means God reconciled you. We have, been, we have studied this. I won't spend too much time on this. We have studied while studying the book of Ephesians the last weeks, few weeks. In the second chapter, what all God did to make us closer to him. Last week, we studied how Jesus removed every kind of barrier between you and God. That's what he's saying. So it is done because of the power, reconciling power of the blood of Jesus. Then the next one. These are all power of the blood. If you don't know the power, how you will use it? Power is even for using it. Whereas the world is using the power, misusing it. You have got power to use it against your enemy. Power to use it for your own walking free clear conscience, happy mind, healthy body. So the, the next power is emboldening power. What do you mean by that? See, in the Hebrews, verse number, I want to read this, Hebrews 10th chapter. Are you all getting this? I hope. Not I hope. I spend a lot of time reading and praying until this message is over. Good Friday is not over for us. Listen to me. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, as I read from verse number 16 onwards, follow with me. It says here, this is the covenant that is God telling you and me. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Glory to God. Now, where remission of this is, there is no more offering for sin. Having, therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holies by the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember, your sins are remitted means once you follow the cleansing process, once you start sincerely fellowshipping with God, I showed you the way, and fellowshipping with one another, in your own family, start with your family, then come to the church. Church is nothing but a cluster of various family. If you fellowship properly with, with your own people, you will be able to fellowship in the church with others. Church is not the place to come and say hi and bye. Fellowship. Yeah, I know. See, the devil knows this fellowship will keep you clean. So he is bringing social distancing, this and that. But thank God. We can still fellowship through digital way. I'm glad for technology. Nothing can stop our fellowship. Now, the remission, your sins are remitted. So don't go on, sit and worry about your past mistake, past you know, sin you committed. That is remitted away. It doesn't exist. God forgot it. Why you are remembering marriage failures? Mistake, past. Why you are going on thinking what happened? It is gone under the blood. Don't worry. Mistake, who has not made? Who has not failed in their life? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because it will get digit digitally recorded. But you claim the power because when you are bold, 
you can be confident with God. So it says we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Bold means your tone of voice will tell you you are praying to God, not worried about what you did yesterday. It is forgiven. If you are confessed, if you have been fellowshipping, you don't have to even say, Lord, I'm sorry, because the blood of Jesus Christ washes. You are not able to think like that because you are you, tonight you're learning the power to place value in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, that is awesome. Atomic power is nothing as compared to the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to take this and impact it in every one of your heart that this church will know that, that because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we are qualified, we are justified, we are washed and completely made ready to enjoy all the blessings of God. So much so that we become a blessing to one another for the glory of God in Jesus' name. So you have to be bold when you go to God. Your tone of voice should tell. Many people go to God. Oh. Either they try to pretend, oh, my father. Or, Lord, I am. They think they are humble. They put their head down. Their head is down because they don't have boldness. Go to God as if he's standing in front of you. When you talk to someone, don't you want to look at each other? We don't because sometimes we want to hide but that blood of, plead the blood of Jesus and be bold. Because boldness comes only through the power of the blood of Jesus. Then, the next one, the overcoming power. Praise God, this is my favorite. The overcoming power of blood. What do you mean overcoming? You cannot be suffering with any kind of wrong habits. I don't care what the wrong habit is. Anything which is not good for your mind and body, which is not good in the sight of God, is wrong, wrong habits. You have to overcome. How do you overcome? Revelation 12.1 tells us, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. This scripture you need to underline, make it part of your daily confession that I am an overcomer. How? Through the blood of the... See, here it says, by the blood. In one translation, it says, they overcame him by the blood of Jesus Christ. Instead of by, that translation says, I like that more. They overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. What is the word of your testimony? That is what all the time we are teaching you. Confess, con. I don't care how contrary is your situation. You confess what the word says. For example, healing. Symptoms show up. You confess because of the blood of Jesus Christ and because by the word which says with his stripes I am healed, I am healed. Many people only confess I am healed, I am healed. No. It is because of the blood. There is power in the blood. And you confess, you can overcome anything in your life. It is a lifetime process, but do it. Because easily other things keep on. There are so many bad, bad habits for every one of us. We can overcome. Because the blood has got overcoming power. Then the next one is deliverance power. If something catches you, don't sit. Be grappled under that. And run to 10 people and ask, what do you think? What do you say? And climb the, you know, like they say in India, climb the tree and go desperate. Come to the blood. It has got that delivering power. I don't care. The Bible says this in Colossians 1, 13 and 14. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. That means if he has delivered you from the very ownership, power, influence, and authority of Satan, it is not only he has delivered 
he will continuously deliver you from the attack of the devil. So plead the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus and get deliverance first in your mind. When your mind is attacked from all direction, you say this, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus upon my soul. It works. It works for me. It works for you. It will work for everybody. That is why it is written here. So in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus upon my soul. Soul means your emotion, your mind and your will. Those thoughts will fade away because the blood has got, you have to be delivered. Delivered means taken out. Then the last one is acceptance. See, all of us in life, we behave with one another because we want the other person to accept me. What if, if I ask, you say no? What if, if I come, you don't like me and you don't accept me? You don't accept me maybe because of my color. You don't accept me because of my accent. None of those matters because the Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ has made us accepted in the beloved. If nobody likes you, God likes you. If overnight your family, father, mother, everybody decide, ah, this, is, this child is not productive, not good enough, so they don't accept you. You smile and say, God accept me. See, that was the attitude of King David. So he wrote in the psalm, even when my father and mother forsake me, the Lord, Psalm 27 says that. So you and I are accepted. You don't have to struggle. See, I don't preach thinking, the, oh, this, how many people have come and gone in our church? They'll say, oh, I, I am not coming to your church. I smile. If you don't accept me, I hope you'll go to a better church. You think where it is better for you to spiritually grow. All churches are same. Like one man said, you know, is there a, a church where I can go, a good church I can go? The pastor said, yeah, but I cannot send you there because it is a good church. When you go there, it will get ruined. You see, that is not the way you select church where you can spiritually grow. I don't know about you. I'm not wasting a good Friday evening teaching you something. This will produce result because I have preached and lifted up the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. The, the blood of Jesus Christ right now in the name of Jesus, I declare over every one of you and many of you, the chains are getting broken. <clears throat> The chain of obsessive negative thing is being broken right now. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, the, the, <clears throat> the various chains of depression, discouragement, disillusionment, confusion is all breaking right now in the name of Jesus. Receive that. Praise him, please. This is a good Friday. Let good things happen to you and me. Let good things happen to this church. Let the power, that is power, that is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, somebody help me sing that song. I can sense him all over here because I have not wasted my time. My church is free from bondages. My church is free from sickness and disease. My church is free from... Lack and poverty. My church is free from enemy's attack of the mind. The mind is stayed on Jesus Christ. We enjoy perfect peace. Glory to God. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Come on, help me. There is power. Power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. My God, my God, you are so good. Did anybody get anything tonight? Isn't God good to us? Don't forget this message. Use your mouth. Release that power which belongs to you through the blood of Jesus Christ. It may be a small harassment. It may be a big harassment. Let us wipe it out, wash it out by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.